Um, Go ahead. You're going to be talking about script forge. Okay, so you see my slides. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Okay, then. Um, well, my name is uh, Jean-Pierre Ledur, and uh, I contribute to LibreOffice since uh, 2013, something like that, uh, mainly with the uh, access to base library, which is now a very major part of uh, the basic libraries uh, which are shipped with uh, LibreOffice. And uh, we started a, a new initiative, which is called ScriptForge. You know what the Forge is, is in the software engineering. And the target is to have something for authors of scripts, either written in basic or in Python. You see that Python is between square brackets because in the first release, Python coders have no benefit from script forge, but will have in the future. Uh, the code exists, so show the code. You can see it on GitLab. Uh, we will uh, see what script forge is in a nutshell, and then uh, also raise the question, is it smart to code an API, because it's an API, we, we offer a number of uh, services uh, with ScriptForge, and the API is mainly written in BASIC. Not only, there are, there are also parts of it written in Python. Uh, service and framework and framework go together. The code is uh, subdivided in services, and the integration is done via a framework. And this makes the thing also extensible in the sense that the framework can integrate new services if uh, needed, also written by other persons than myself or the other people who work with me. Um, we will see what the modules will contain in the first release, which will be shipped with uh, LO 7.1, and what we plan for the future. So what is it in a, in a nutshell? It's a service-oriented framework. Well, uh, we, had, we have implemented so far something like uh, 300 methods. And uh, well, the question was, how can we make them coexist? Well, we separated them in silos, and we called them services. We'll see why and how. And uh, to make the whole thing extensible, well, we built the framework. What we will have now immediately uh, as, uh, as functionalities, well, we extended the arrays and the strings containers uh, with a huge number of functions. And we implemented also a mapping class called dictionary, which is larger than the collection class, which is included in BASIC. Error handling is also uh, weak or weaker than VBA anyway, and we extended it also. Uh, we built a complete files and folders management uh, class and uh, also read and write to text files because how to do it in basic is quite rudimental. Um, localization also, localization is done with uh, a number of functions. And we use the PO, Portable Object Format, for that. Uh, there are a number of functions to integrate BASIC and Python. And then, more classically, uh, a number of uh, classes also to manage Windows documents, uh, uh, in, in particular uh, calc sheets, also dialogues and their controls, and how to access databases. Um, Mainly for the last ones, documents, the dialogues, and databases, the idea is not to replace you, know, it's to make wrappers that facilitate the access to you. Know. So, an API written in BASIC, is that smart? Well, the uh, first question is, can we handle complex data structures in BASIC? Well, the answer is yes. A variant can contain anything, and you can, uh, including user-defined types, and user-defined types can contain 
variants themselves and etc. So that makes uh, the structuring of, of, of data, of information, quite easy and quite, quite, quite complete. Now, another question was, is there object orientation in BASIC? Well, the answer is partially yes. You can uh, uh, encapsulate uh, methods and properties in a class module, that works. But there is no subtyping. It's, it, it can be bypassed. For instance, we, buy, we, we use that for making the color class a subtype of the document class. But it's, it's bypassed, it's not uh, built in. Uh, and uh, of course, basic variable types, a string is not an object in basic. Eh? So it's, it's quite limited, but sufficient to do a number of things. And uh, an important uh, pro property of, uh, of this is that you can e encapsulate methods and properties. Uh, there are no namespaces in uh, in basic uh, and even public and private attributes are ignored so this makes things a bit difficult to have a very large api uh, but uh, there also we worked a bit on that important is that and this is the next slide um, what was really blocking is that uh, when you load a new library into BASIC, well, uh, all the functions present in that new library are de facto public for uh, from anywhere in the libraries that you have already loaded uh, before. So this makes that you never uh, are sure when you call a function by its name that you execute the function that you think should be executed now. Uh, ex accept it if you fully qualify the function with global scope probably, uh, dot the library name, dot the module name, dot the function name. But uh, happily we discovered that uh, it was in fact really easy to uh, work around that, you can assign a module, which is a usable basic object, to a variable and execute any function just by qualifying it with a variable which has received the module as container, as content. Okay, this was uh, where a number of prerequisites that we had to build what we did. And uh, now the user's point of view, well, is quite easy. The user must, of course, know to start with scripting and using the services that we, that we provide. Well, of course, the script for library has to be loaded, that's a matter of, of uh, it's an obligation in, in BASIC. And afterwards, if that is done, the user will call a method, name is create script service. Of course, the analogy with create unit service is obvious and is intentional. Uh, the user have has to, to call create script service, for instance, for a service called file system, which gives and then access to a number of methods, for instance, copy file, delete folder. This avoids, uh, in many cases, very long method names and simplifies uh, the, for the user the use of uh, our services and uh, prevents any collision between homonyms. Uh, besides create script service, we, as a tolerance, we, we allow to use, because we think that there will be uh, used frequently, uh, to directly call the modules for, for arrays, strings, and exceptions. And so it's, it's equivalent to write create script service array or sf array dot so. 
but SFRA. Okay, but you you spare a number of, uh, of 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 lines of code. Okay, that's what the user has to has to know. Uh, the create script service will then return either a basic module as an object or a basic object, a basic uh, class instance. In fact, and in the latter case, arguments may be passed to the constructor of the instance. So uh, from now on, if you want to use a method from script force, you qualify it. How is that implemented? Well, uh, you see the three levels. You have the user script, you have uh, the core of script forge, and you have a library. And the, the three parts here uh, may be written by three different persons. The user is probably some, someone, someone else, but uh, script forge, core, and my library. My library can be any library who wants to play the game. Well, the user script calls create script service, and uh, the core will, of course, contain the method create script service. What will that method do? Well, uh, once, of course, the my library, which is the library called by the user, must be loaded, but this is done by, uh, by uh, the API. Script Scriptforge will search for a method called register script services in my library and then we'll return this the requested service and the register script services is a mandatory uh, method that must be implemented as a subroutine in the requested library and in that method the author of that of the library, which can be an extension, for instance, will enumerate the services that it implements very easily, either as a module, for the, the example of my service one, or as a string, giving the method that must be called by ScriptForge core when the user requests the service to get an instance of that specific service. So the framework uh, here is quite easy. The goal is to have from basic scripts one unique create script service method and the same method from in the future from Python scripts. This makes that uh, the challenge will be to have services common to Python and to BASIC, implemented either in Python or in BASIC. The framework for the BASIC part, which exists today, uh, you can see there, the core implements create script service, implements Register service and register event manager. I, did, I will not talk about register event manager, uh, except the fact that you can get services when you when uh, a code is triggered by events as well. And an associated library or an invited, we, we call it that way, uh, an extension, for instance, must minimally implement register script services and optionally a number of other things which make things uh, easier uh, pythonists they, they are really really easy to easy, easy to write a pythonist will uh, will recognize the repr uh, routine which uh, uh, asked uh, the service to to give uh, a textual representation of the content of uh, of a specific uh, instance but the idea is well to have common services both from BASIC and from Python. So to have finally the core library, a number of associated libraries, and uh, what, what the, the green part and the blue part 
uh, will be shipped in the first release and uh, optionally uh, all the candidates to make new libraries in the future or uh, wanting to make extensions and using uh, the classes of ScriptForge can make extensions and can just be integrated in the whole uh, framework with uh, by implementing a rich, uh, a, uh, the reg registering of, uh, of the new services he wants to implement. Okay, now, uh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Now, what is uh, present in the first release that we will uh, ship with uh, LO 7.1? Well, four basic libraries you recognize uh, with the elements that I mentioned uh, before. So, SF documents is the name of a library where calc is the name of a service. So, uh, four basic libraries and an, a number of Python helper functions. We will see uh, where uh, in the next slides. There is also one uh, online help page, like you know them uh, with LibreOffice by service, and one English PUT file. What is PUT? The Portable Object Template file for uh, preparing the translation of all the labels that we use in the software. There is also a complete unit test suite, uh, which will not be integrated uh, in LibreOffice uh, in the first step, but it exists. And there is also a coding convention charter for uh, uh, future contributors. As an example of the help page, you see that quite detailed, that's the, 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 the name of the library is SF databases and database is the name of the service. And you see, for instance, here, how can you invoke the service with a number of arguments, etc. And you have all the methods and all the properties which are detailed with examples uh, below. So, again, the libraries and the services, you see the green blocks are implemented as modules and the blue blocks are implemented as classes. Of course, there are sometimes a number of methods that give of that return themselves another class or another, another uh, object. Uh, some of them you can be reached either, for instance, I, I take here the user interface. Uh, you can use the method open document to get a document object, you can also get the document object directly via create script service if, uh, if you find it easier. Okay, now we go through the different uh, services as implemented so far. So the array service, uh, we have implemented 30 methods in it. Um, the target is uh, our 1D arrays, so vectors, and 2D arrays, two dimensions uh, matrices. Uh, you see that the verbs are quite easy to, 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 to learn and to, and to remember. Uh, you can manipulate data, you can transform the array, you can sort. Uh, for instance, uh, you can also sort rows on a column or sort columns on a row. You can search arrays, uh, you can uh, manipulate arrays as sets, making the union, uh, reducing the array with only unique items, etc. And you can also uh, import and export. For instance, uh, you can directly import a CSV file into an array uh, or uh, convert I take the last one here, convert the array uh, into a dictionary, so a mapping class, which is precisely the next uh, topic. Uh, basic contain collections today, well, uh, collections have a number of restrictions and we implemented dictionaries here, exactly like Microsoft did in 
uh, in the past. Microsoft also offers dictionary and collections. Uh, this is much more flexible than collections, and we have almost, uh, I say, 90% mapped the interface as uh, on uh, onto the VBA dictionary class uh, here. Uh, we provide also a number of conversion conversions from dictionaries to something else, uh, in particular to JSON. This is done in uh, with a Python specific uh, function. Also conversion from property value uh, to property values and importing from property values. Warum, uh, why convert and not uh, and not uh, export? Because uh, convert means you add something to what exists already. No, it's it's it's, it's, it's the opposite. Import means that you that you add to what exists uh, new property values in, in, this, in this case or converting a dictionary to an array. As an example, the management of the services, so the framework is implemented with a dictionary of dictionaries. A first dictionary of libraries and a second one of all the services provided by that specific library. We provide an exception service. Um, here is, for instance, is an example of the output as displayed to the user when uh, uh, race fatal is uh, executed by ScriptForge because uh, ScriptForge has detected some anomalies. You see the library, the service, the method, in this case sort, and you see the syntax of the interface used by the user and in uh, some of the arguments there was something wrong. The validation oop, the validation rules are reminded here. Sort order must be a string and containing one of the next values. And unfortunately it contains something else. So the execution is cancelled. So uh, the user friendliness of um, the, the the API that we provide is illustrated here. Uh, you will notice also that this is here in English. Uh, everything there can be uh, can be localized. Here to fill the gap with the VBA Air object, we did a, some a number of things. Uh, well, the time goes further. I will not detail here. Uh, what the possibilities are. Um, also, still about exception, there is a console that is that is uh, provided, and a console is filled with an execution of uh, a number of debug print statements. And debug print will uh, can have an, as many arguments as you want, and uh, will display in an Model or non-module dialog, uh, what happens and what happens during the execution. It's uh, in fact uh, particularly useful when you execute, for instance, a user-defined function from a calc formula. Well, you cannot use uh, the IDE to debug uh, your function. You have to use. You can use in this case uh, in non-module mode the console. You have also a file system service. It's mapped on what VBA offers. Uh, with, uh, I can underline here a number of verbs with uh, wildcards, uh, where the arguments can contain wildcards. Uh, you have also a number of functions executed by Python. You can for instance, get the MD5 or something or, or another hash code uh, from the file that you that you give us as argument. It then for compare files. The text stream class is quite easy and quite obvious. Uh, the difference with what the basic offers uh, in standard is uh, that you can uh, set uh, the new line and the encoding uh, specifically by file and. Uh, 
No, the L10N service is quite rich and quite original, I think. Uh, for those who know, I don't know who knows what the PO file is, but it's uh, a technique imagined uh, by GNU to separate the two profiles between the programmer who uh, writes a, a number of labels in his language or in English and uh, the translator who uh, translates the, all the, the, the strings in a specific file. What we provide here is a, a method add text, a method export to port file, which generates the template file, and uh, when at runtime, uh, get text will allow to get from a PO file, so a translated file, the correct uh, the correct uh, translation. Platform is. Uh, well, a mapping of the Python platform.py uh, library. In the session service, we put uh, what we could not could not uh, put elsewhere. <laughs> so we put there a number of UNO objects, uh, introspection uh, methods, uh, a send mail uh, method uh, in particular. Uh, also interfaces to easily execute external programs, uh, either in Python, either an, a, a calc function, or uh, running an application based on the suffix of the file that you provide as argument. Also uh, executing a web service uh, uh, or open some URL in your browser. All these methods here, that these are uh, examples, huh? uh, there are more. In fact, uh, confirmed here, we have in total 42 methods to, uh, to work on strings. Uh, for instance, to replace substrings. So basic as a replace uh, method, but replace STA will work on arrays of strings. Uh, replace SHA will work on uh, substitution one by one of characters in input and output uh, strings. Uh, we have uh, a collection of uh, input validation functions. Uh, for instance, is x digit is a string that you provide uh, hexadecimal digit. Is it IPv4? Is it a URL? Is it a white space, which is much more than uh, space? Is it a regular expression or does it fit with a given regular expression? Item to pass strings here, find regular expression in a string, replace all occurrences of a regex by something uh, something else. Or split not quoted, uh, quite useful when, for instance, you want to pass a CSV file. Well, uh, the CSV file has a number of chunks of strings separated by commas and a chunk when it is surrounded with quotes, can contain commas. What do you do? Well, you, you split not quoted. And you give the commas a separator and uh, you, you get the chunks in the array. Uh, working with line break special characters, also hashing, also done in Python, hash uh, str. And we were inspired but by what uh, Python and PHP uh, in particular offer or propose here. We have also implemented in the core a timer which measures elapsed time. It's to compare uh, the performance in duration uh, between different algorithms if, uh, if needed. So you can, for instance, start, uh, start the timer, suspend it just before displaying a message box, uh, waiting for the OK and then continue again and, uh, and continue again up, up to extermination and measure then what was the effective duration for the significant part of what you, you want to, do, to measure uh, in terms of performance. And the user interface service uh, manages uh, windows and uh, documents. Uh, you have a number of things proposed here. 
uh, also progress bars you can put the progress bar or text in status bar you can also display dialog which um, shows a progress bar during which uh, you can uh, uh, well do a number of things and uh, give give the, the progress on, on, on the dialog it's, it's from there that you start uh, document instances with uh, here a number of uh, of uh, methods of course base documents are often uh, different from uh, the other types of documents that's why they have uh, their specific methods also and get document is for instance to get a class when you you give uh, let's say untitled to as argument when you get a document and uh, you go forward and to you can reach that way in the SF documents library, the document service, uh, with a number of, uh, of things that are classical to do on documents. Uh, pa particularly here is, is that we uh, convert immediately document properties or custom properties into a dictionary. You use the dictionary verbs if you want to, uh, to, to update them and you uh, you can write them back in the document. You see here property X component. Well, the component uh, you know object that you know can be reached just by giving X component. We also we always used X as uh, as prefix to uh, to designate use objects. Uh, well, it's just a shortcut to reach the document that the the component. Uh, mapped onto the document that uh, that is that where it's, it is about here in, in in this instance, and we implemented the, in particular we did nothing about write a progress uh, etc. But we we uh, developed uh, mainly here uh, a number of things around uh, calc sheets. Uh, and we extended uh, the concept of range. A range is always a string, the sheet, and then, uh, uh, like you see here, sheet x uh, dot uh, etc. The range is given as usual, but we extended it. Uh, you can, for instance, use uh, a star instead of uh, the the real coordinates, just by. Uh, uh, the star replaces the used area on the sheet uh, and you can also use the tilt to designate the current selection and you can also use a specific method called range to get an object for instance if you want to copy a range from file well, file a to file to file b and uh, well from sheet x to the current sheet uh, on this with these coordinates, while well, it's done in in in, in uh, one statement. You have also shortcuts. You see X spreadsheet or X cell range, uh, and you can also have uh, here a number of import uh, import uh, verbs to fill uh, sheets. The 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 focus here is really on filling sheets with data and not formatting them the only verb that you have to format data is set uh, cell style uh, here for database well you can mainly get uh, selective data with these verbs here uh, and you can get you get an one single value or you can get massive data with get rows and you get an array of uh, of data of course uh, conversion of i don't know date values in databases towards date values in basic is done automatically you can also run uh, action sqls uh, let's say updates or create table whatever you can uh, you can execute them directly with uh, run SQL as, as verb. Uh, and then uh, you have also shortcut, shortcuts to a number of, uh, of uh, UNO objects uh, to, to go further if, if, if needed. 
item for dialogues, uh, what is specific is that the dialogue uh, can be displayed with uh, in, mo in non-modal mode. In that case, well, uh, the execute uh, must mention that uh, the argument is true and means that uh, you uh, you want it in non-modal mode. In that case, well, the execution goes just further uh, up to the termination of uh, of the dialogue. Um, you see, to get the dialogue, you just to create script service as usual with a number of arguments, which dialogue, uh, etc. And the controls uh, method gives an access to the individual controls. Both for dialogue server controls, we uh, do not make any distinction between the view and the model. So it's a simplification. Also, uh, all the all the, the consoles here, whatever the type, have the same, this exactly the same properties. Uh, in particular, uh, take value, well, you use value to uh, get or set the value of a console, whatever its its type. Uh, you don't uh, you don't need to know what its specific uh, property is. Uh, it's just a simplification, and you have also shortcuts to console model and console view. So uh, this will be my last slide, and uh, I'm over my time. Uh, so the perspectives are mainly to have uh, a number of uh, services typically for Python. Uh, our philosophy is that if you want to display a message box in Python, well, the easiest way to do it and to, ha and to not have any visual difference with basic is to let it do in basic and to get the return value back, uh, item for dialogues, etc. And then uh, the next challenge is, will be to have uh, the services common to Python and basic so that we can use base, uh, services developed in basic or services developed in Python from anywhere. OK, I thank you. Thanks, Jean-Pierre.